Welcome back to another Jeff Reviews for you. And as you saw in this video, we are going to be installing our very own tankless hot water heater. It's going to be pretty exciting. You know what? Let's get right into this review. Not that long ago, I installed a tankless water heater in my house and the people over at Thermomate actually saw that install and they asked me to do a video installing their unit. And I figured, you know what? I did a few upgrades since I did that original video and I would love to show them off. So I'm going to show them right here on the Thermo mate model i should say that this is the 18 kilowatt version which is exactly the same as the one that i had installed already and this one retails between 300 and 370 dollars just depending on any kind of discounts the highest i've seen it is 370 and the lowest i've seen is right around 300 let's unbox this to see what we get all right so here's what we have unboxed this is the thermomate unit it's 17 by 13 and about three inches tall so it's really compact i have a great set of directions i also have a template so i know exactly where to put my mounting screws all right so a couple things you see on the bottom you see the red and the blue caps that's for the inlet and the outlet cold water goes in hot water goes out but look at this they actually have a spot where our wire will be crimped that was not on the ream unit that i purchased i like that they have included that here one of the reasons I selected the ream unit was because of the brass connectors. Let's see what they have here on this Thermomate. I should say that these are always tested from the factory so water might come out. Yeah, I can already see it dripping. So make sure you have something to catch the water. But look, brass connections. Awesome job. I put the Thermomate unit aside because I want to show you something we're going to do before even installing it and that's setting up some isolating valves and these valves are very important for these tankless water heaters. I didn't show this on my first install because to be honest with you I was just trying to get hot water back but these are definitely something I added later and it's a way for you to go back and descale the unit so let me show you how I set these up. I will link these exact units down in the description if you're looking to buy these yourself. These diverter valves actually allow us to turn off the water to the unit and then we can turn this valve to open that up and put in a new attachment here to descale this unit. In about six or so months after my install, I will be doing a descale, but these are needed for that. On the top, you have a union connection, and this actually will connect to the bottom of your tankless water heater. The only difference between the hot and cold is the hot side actually has the spot where you can relieve the pressure with the pressure valve, and so I'll install that as well. Before I install, I always make sure the valves work, both the side valve and the top valve, because there's nothing worse than having something installed and you realize at the end, well, you know what? It doesn't work like it's supposed to. So always check your valves to make sure they work. I want to show you this is the end of the valve. There is a rubber stopper there. Make sure you have that. Now, I'm not going to put Teflon on this particular part because it has its own shutoff, but all the other pieces I'm going to add Teflon tape to. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to set these up right now, install it to our tankless water heater before we even get started. I also picked up two of these male threaded PEX ends just so I can hook it to the bottom of the diverter valve. And of course my PEX tube will go in here. I like using shark bites. Some people may not. I think they're quick and easy. Yeah, these are about 13 bucks a piece, but like I said, they're quick and easy. I typically wrap the Teflon tape around five times before installing it. Right now I'm just installing these by hand. I'm gonna go back later with the wrench to make sure they're tightened down. I like to put Teflon on all the different connections like this. Some say not to, but for me, I've always had good success with the Teflon. I even put Teflon up here at the Union. Just make sure you still have your rubber gasket in place. So what I have here is I have the Union tops on both of the diverter valves installed. And you can see that actually this unit came with a silicone piece here and here. So you can still see what is hot and what is cold. I did have Teflon tape underneath. And of course, I have Teflon tape here again. Remember, I wrap this around five times. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up the union to set this in place. Nothing so far has been wrench tightened. It's all been screwed on by hand. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to hook up our diverter valve right here to the union piece that connects us to our Thermomate tankless hot water tank. I'm actually going to turn the angle of this just so you can see the side view, but I'm just going to screw this on up into place. This is how we're going to install it. Remember, I do have my washer in place. I want to make sure that's there at all times, just like with the typical union. I'm going to make the connection there. Start to screw this in, making sure I'm lined up nice and straight. All right, there we go. Now let's put the cold on. When it's all said and done, this is how your setup should look. You notice that I'm still clear to get a screwdriver in here so I can get the um, front off of this. 
Also, when I start tightening this down, I'm gonna start tightening from here down. So I'll use wrenches on both the unit and the union top. And then of course the union, I'll tighten those all down with wrenches, but making sure you're securing both pieces with a wrench so you don't bend anything. The time has come for us to officially tighten down all our connections. And to do that, I'm gonna go from the top down. And so I have to take off this cap or the cover here to the hot water heater. So there are four exterior screws, two here on the bottom and two exactly the same on the top. You notice I have this diverter in the open position and that's just so I can get my screwdriver in here to loosen up the screw and take it off. But I do need to remember when I put it all back together to put this back into the closed position just like this side because I don't need water coming out at me. It's time to take off these screws and if you don't have one of these, I would absolutely recommend getting one of these Klein tools. This is an 11 in one screwdriver. So I have all the different tips you can think of plus there's some hex bits and it's just really convenient having this all into one package. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew all four screws and then that cap right over there also comes off. Make sure that you put them aside and don't lose them. With the cover off, I can now tighten down all my pieces with wrenches, but this is what I want to show you. I'm actually going to tie a wrench right to here and then I can tighten this piece down holding this solid so none of the pieces on the inside are messed with. I've already done that on the hot water side, but now I'm going to do that on the cold water side. Once I'm done here, I can put my union back together. It's interesting looking inside of here because I notice it's immediately different than the previous unit that I've installed. That one had two different tubes where the water was. This one actually has like a coil system underneath here. So that's pretty neat. I wanted to show you up close for the electrical because we have two sections here. This is for the one breaker at the box. This is for the other breaker at the box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna run my wires up tie line one in here, tighten it down, tie line two in here, tighten it down. This is the same breaker. And I'll do the same thing for the second breaker. And of course my wires are gonna be black and white. So I will reconstitute the white one to make it black just so people know it is hot. We are now officially to the point where we're gonna hang our water heater. So what I have is I have this template and on the template right here, there are actually four holes that are drilled out or just bored out there. And so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to level the template, just draw a dot or, or use a pen to write through that hole and then you can put your screws in. I've already run, of course, you can see on my wires and pipes, none of this is live, of course. And so I will say I spent about $200 in this eight AWG wire. And I also spent about another hundred dollars just on the circuit breaker. So that's something else you're going to have to factor in as far as price. So let me put my screws in and hang up our water heater. Here we are up and ready. We are installed. I'm sorry I had to do this in the portrait view, but the landscape, I couldn't get everything in the video. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the plumbing. I'm going to make sure there are no leaks before installing the electrical. Here I'm installing the PEX and yes, I am using Shark Bite. And I know there's a lot of people out there that say not to use that as a connection because it's a possibility of failing. And my opinion is I'm gonna use these. I've had great success with these. Plus I think people watching this video might be using Shark Bites too. I do have a whole PEX set where I can install all these things in a typical fashion. And I might put out a different video just showing that, but this is what I'm doing now. A tip I have, however, though, is to buy one of these um, PEX disconnector pieces and just leave it there. Don't even move it. If you ever need to do do any kind of work here, you have your tool with you already. We officially have the water on running through the hot water tank and I do not see any leaks. So that's exciting. You can see that I have these two valves closed because I did not want any water coming out towards me. Now, remember when I put the cap or the lid back on, I have to open this one up. So I'll probably turn the cold water off at that time as well. Everything's looking good. Let's hook up our electrical. All right, so let's talk about the electrical and I did consult an electrician. So for this unit, I had the 18 kilowatt unit. So a couple things I had to do. One, I had to make sure I had enough space in my box. Plus I had to make sure that the amperage that's coming in can support this unit because it does have a huge draw of power. Then I had to get two double pole 40 amp breakers and a whole lot of eight AWG wire for my install. I'm not gonna show you me running that through or even hooking it up to the electrical box. I will show you what I do when I wire it into the hot water tank. I just wanted you to know that. Let's get right into wiring this up. As we're installing the electrical, I just have a piece of it cut off on the top and I stick it on up in here and screw it down. I will say I've already reconstituted these wires. You can see that I just drew on them with black marker. You can use a heat shrink. You can put a flag on here, just somewhere of marking that this is a hot wire. So I'm gonna put this last piece on up in here, tighten it down put the cap back on and then test it out. 
I should have said that as I've been using this electrical, I know that these are off, but you should always practice electrical safety and use one of these electrical voltage detectors. Right now you can see that it's green, which means go. And so I'm gonna continue putting this together. I will hook this back up and show you what it looks like when it's not safe. We are hooked up and ready to go, but I wanted to show you this. Notice the difference right now. This is very dangerous. Do not touch anything on the inside of this box. Let's put our lid on. This green light here tells us that we are wired correctly. We can push this button to turn on our unit. We notice that we can dial this as low as 80 degrees Fahrenheit and as high as 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's just how you turn the dial here. If you wanna use this in Celsius, you just push and hold this down for three seconds. You wanna bring it back, three seconds again, and there you are. Here we are with our final install. I am gonna tighten up these wires a little bit here, down here just so they're more secure and professionally installed. But you can see we have our isolated valves. I even have this um, discharge pipe here just in case we need to service it. We're not blowing that hot water in our face. So it's all set up, looks good. Let's go test it out. In this video, we were installing our very own Thermomate tankless hot water heater. So what did I think? Well, the company does recommend that you consult an electrician and a plumber to set this up. I'm neither of those, and although I did consult them, I was able to do this pretty much on my own. That being said, if you don't feel comfortable doing any of this, make sure you do consult a professional, especially for that electrical work. In the end, it was a pretty easy install, and I really appreciate Thermomate for the things that they included. I thought it was a pretty cool item. You know what, though? I did add a few other items that I thought were very important for a tankless hot water heater, at least to use, at least in my opinion, and I'm going to link those down below. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews for You. As always, thanks for stopping by, and I hope you have a great day. We're just going to test the hot water. This is only about 10 feet away from the hot water tank itself, so this should heat up pretty quick. But what we want to do is we want to get a good temperature range. It's only been running for about 10 seconds and it started to heat up. Let's put our thermometer under there. I know the light went off, so I'll just read you the numbers if you can't see them, but I'm up to 128 degrees Fahrenheit, 130. So it's climbing up. I have it set to be at 140, so we'll see how close we get to 140. Well, honestly, in less than a minute, we got as high as 140 degrees Fahrenheit and it's holding steady, wow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this run for about five or so minutes and then we'll get a temperature rating then. It's wavering between 137 and 138 right now. So over five minutes, it's still a pretty high temperature. I really do appreciate that you stayed around for my entire review where I installed this Thermomate tankless hot water heater. You know what? During this video, I actually referenced my install of my Ream tankless hot water heater. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link that right up here. But if you don't want to see that, I'm also going to link an As Seen on TV playlist that I've reviewed all the As Seen on TV products this year right up here. And I would love it if you would click here or here. And when you do, by the magic of the internet, I'm going to join you at one of those links. So go ahead, click it. It's safe. I promise.